So before we talked about beta series analysis in AFNI. Uh, you can also do the same thing in SPM using a series of MATLAB command lines, which we'll get into with the, uh, this function that we've written. But uh, before we do that, just a brief review on what beta series analysis is. Remember, for beta series analysis, we take each individual event of a condition, each trial of a condition, and instead of just lumping all those together, taking the average like we would in a normal analysis, we're actually interested in that trial by trial variability in the beta for each of those trials. We string them together and then we take that, we can average it across a region of interest or just within a certain voxel, and we correlate that with every other voxel in the brain. We can then do a R to Z transformation and then use that for a one sample t test. So, pretty simple. But in SPM, it's a slightly different approach than we had in AFNI. So let me show you, first of all, how it gets set up. So first of all, what I'm going to do here is open up SPM and show you what this design matrix looks like in one of these subjects. So if we go to review, uh, I'm in a subjects directory which has already been estimated, set up and estimated, but we're just going to look at its design matrix. So notice here what I've done is I've actually estimated a beta individually for every single trial and every single regressor. Now you wouldn't need to do this, <coughs> excuse me, for every single regressor, you, you could just do this for the only the regressor that you're interested in. Just take the betas for that specific regressor. But in this case we've done it for all of them. And notice at the very bottom as I'm scrolling across here, I'm just holding down the right mouse button, going across the columns, uh, you see there's an index that increases. Okay, so that's the number of betas as I'm going across here. Okay. So that's what it looks like, and if I look at the actual SPM file, let's see here, get back to MATLAB, in the actual SPM file, notice in this V beta structure is where all that information is going to reside. Now, Descript is going to show you what each of these were called, what they were labeled before they were put into the model. So notice here, I have things like respond left, respond right. Uh, this is a task where they did other stuff as well, but we also had their left and right motor responses. So it gets tagged whenever they did one of those responses. And notice the setup is the name of the regressor, in this case respond left, an underscore followed by the occurrence of that regressor. So this goes up to you know, 20 something. Okay, or across all these different runs. Yes, so if you actually want to do this, set this up, you know, how do you get to a design matrix like this? Um, this is really kind of the sticking point of beta series analysis. Doing it by hand can be very, very time consuming. Uh, there's some shortcuts which we'll cover later, but I mean, if you're feeling comfortable that you can do this by yourself, then go ahead and do it. But what you need to do basically, and I'm going to blitz through a lot of this, I, I apologize if it's a little disorienting, but when you're setting up your data and design for, uh, say, a single subject, you know, you'd enter the scans, you'd get to conditions, and for these conditions, instead of just making one for each individual regressor, now you have to make one for each individual trial of that regressor that you're interested in. So not surprisingly, this can be a lot of conditions. In the example I just gave, that's nearly 30 conditions for each uh, to correspond to each individual trial within, say, the respond left regressor and you need to enter just one onset for when that trial occurred, uh, duration if that's relevant at all, and so on. Obviously you can do this much quicker by building a, a .mat file and entering it in multiple conditions. That will save you a lot of time and really it's the most practical way to do it, uh, but we'll cover that a little bit later. That's slightly beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now. So that's how you set it up. That's what the beta series analysis looks like from an eagle's eye point of view. Uh, how you would set up your design matrix, first of all, um, for the regressor that you're interested in, and then being able to estimate each beta for each trial individually. Okay, so the next tutorial will cover a function which allows you to take those individual betas from that uh, spm.mat file and then run a correlation analysis on that beta series.